All right. I want to take you guys on the journey. Probably about 10 years ago, no, way more than 10 years ago, I was 16 years old, and one of the things I loved more than anything was playing baseball. It was a sunny afternoon in Los Angeles, California, and my team was in an epic battle against our opponents. The only problem was I was playing horribly. For you youth, you understand what it's like to play a game where nothing you can do was going right. I wasn't acting right, I wasn't pitching right, I wasn't thinking right, and my emotions were getting the best of me. My frustration was noticeable, and luckily we had my dad on the coaching staff. He called timeout and he came out to the field, and I was excited, I was happy that he was there because no one knows me better than my dad. He knows my pitching mechanics and he even knows my mental makeup. He knows exactly what to tell me at the right time to get me to perform at my best when I need, when I need it most. I'll never forget. He walks up to me and he looks me right in the eyes. The first question he asks is, are you hungry? <laughs> I remember looking at him and thinking to myself, am I hungry? Does that not realize that this is such a huge game? We got a lot of fans. The game's on the line. If we lose, it can cost us our, our spot in the standings, drop us to second place. And he's asking me if I'm hungry in a moment like this. So I said something that any teenager would said in, say in this moment. I looked in the eyes and I said, kind of. <laughs> and then he proceeded to take my order. He goes, what do you want to eat? I said, Burger King. He says, then he, then he says, what do you want? I said, a Whopper with cheese and a Dr. Pepper. And then he proceeds to give me his order. Well, that's great, son. I'm going to have a double Whopper with cheese, extra onions, and a Coke. What he does next is what really threw me off. He turned around and he started to walk off the, off the mound to waste the time out for that conversation. That's all he said. He was walking back to the dugout and I was staring at the back of his head just lost. Why did that just happen? As he's walking away, sensing the gaze of a son on the back of his head, he turns around, he looks at me, smiles, and just goes like this. It was a father communicating to a son, relax, relax, you got this. That was the exact timeout. Those were the exact words I needed to hear to perform at my best. Ended up turning it around, and we won that game. What I love about sports is that when things get difficult, when the going gets tough, great coaches will call a timeout to regroup the players, to refresh, and to help them remember the things that matter most. But we don't do that in life. We don't do that. When the deadlines are there, we got a lot of homework, we got a lot of tests going on, the expectations of mom and dad sometimes, and you feel like you have to do a little bit more. You stay up a little bit later, trying to go all out, and it leads to burnout. But what you needed all along was a timeout. Allow me, at this moment, for those of you who are youth or parents or coaches who are listening to this, if you're at a moment in your life where things are speeding up on you, Invite me to ask you, figuratively speaking, to come on in and take a knee, because I'm going to call a timeout for you. And in this timeout, what I want to share with you are five things, five things to remember. This isn't rocket science, you've heard these before, but a lot of times, as the saying goes, common knowledge isn't always common practice. And while it's good to know what to do, it's even better to do what you know. So I just want to give you five reminders to perform at a high level when the game is on the line. Principle number one, live on purpose with purpose. When every moment matters and every play counts, you can't afford to go through the motions. People are counting on you to be great. And so we must live on purpose with purpose. A lot of things that happens as youth or as parents or as coaches, we take, our, we take too much counsel from our feelings. I don't feel like going to school. I don't feel like doing chores. I don't feel like doing the hard things. When you take your counsel from your feelings, if you feel sad, you're gonna start acting sad. If you feel stressed, you're gonna start acting stressed. If you're feeling down, you're gonna start acting down, and then you're gonna start playing down, playing stressed, playing sad. When you do things on purpose with purpose, you decide how you're gonna be. This is who I wanna be, and this is what I gotta do to be that person. Do things on purpose with purpose. I once heard a softball coach tell his player, he told her, when you discover why you do what you do, you'll have more power to do it. Principle number one, live on purpose. 
Principle number two. Be present. I want to give an analogy. I want you guys to imagine having a dog. We all have a dog. This is our dog. And this dog's name is Buddy. He's a golden retriever, and he's big and he's lovable, but the guy is untrained. And he's taking us out to the field, and we're all going, and I, I, I'm, holding, I'm going to be holding a leash for this one. We all go out to this field, and he's all over the place. If I go down, I reach down, I take Buddy off the leash. Where is he going? Everywhere. Because he's untrained. He's running away, and I'm yelling at him, Buddy, get back here. Get back here. Sit. Lay down. Play dead. Do something. Listen to me. But he's not going to listen to me. Not because he's a bad dog, but because he's untrained. He doesn't know those words. He doesn't know what that means. But then I take him and I train him for eight months to get him to the point where he's, he's perfectly obedient. We take Buddy, the same dog, to the same field, take him off the leash, and where's Buddy going to go now? Wherever I tell him to go. What's changed? He's trained now. My young friends, our minds are the exact same way. When our mind is untrained and the pressure's on, it's going to run to the ditch of doubt. It's going to run to the field of fear. It's going to be going all over the place when you really need to put your mind right where it wants to be. The best athletes have the ability to put their mind where they want it, when they want it. Now you might be thinking, how do I do that? That'd be a great superpower to have. How do I do that? Let me show you. I want everyone to take one deep breath. Hold it and release. That's what it feels like to be present. And as you are present, the fear of failure in tomorrow and beating up on yourself for the failures of yesterday won't get in your way of being at your best today. Principle number three. Trust the process. In his book, The Inner Game of Tennis, Tim Galway gives a great example, analogy of a rose seed. He says if we take a rose seed and we put it in the earth, we don't get mad at it because it's stemless or rootless. We water it because it's a seed. When it starts coming out of the earth, we don't get frustrated because it's underdeveloped. We don't get angry because the rose, the rose don't appear when we want them to. We continue to feed it and nourishment, nourish it and just trust the process. Part of trusting the process is focusing on the things you can control. When the game is on the line, we don't have time to focus on our opponents. We don't have the time to focus on the things we don't have control over. You're going to have ups. You're going to have down. You're going to have good day. You're going to have bad days. But if you focus on the process, you'll see the results will take care of themselves. Principle number four for this time out. Learn from failures. Michael Jordan is arguably one of the greatest athletes of all time. Athletes. I didn't just say basketball player, athletes. And he has said, he's been known to say that he's lost, or he's missed over 9,000 shots, lost almost 300 games, 26 times was asked to take the final shot and missed. And then MJ goes on to say that, in his own words, I have failed over and over and over again. And that is why I succeed. My young friends, I want you to remember that failure is an event. It, is not, it does not define who you are. And the more you're willing to learn from failure, the less you're going to fear it. Another great example is a woman named Sarah Blakely, CEO and founder of her own company, one of the youngest self-made billionaires of all time. An interviewer asked her, they said, how are you so successful? And she goes, oh, I attribute it to my dad. He embedded a certain mindset in me. And they, they asked her a little bit more about it. What mindset are you talking about? She said, well, when I was younger, my brother and I would come home from school. And a normal parent or an average parent would ask, what did you learn today? And their average parent would ask, how was school today? Not Mr. Blakely. Her dad would ask her, and what did you fail today? How did you fail? And they were trained to always share with dad the ways they failed. Now, she said something interesting. She said, when we, when we proudly reported to dad, we didn't fail today, he would kind of be disappointed inside. That made her dangerous. She learned to not be afraid of failure. Some of you, because of your fear of failure, it's holding you back from working outside your comfort zone. Once again, when you're willing to learn from failure, you're going to fear it less. Principle number five. And this one is so important. 
because I see it happen with youth all of, all of the time, is the ability to look at the bright side. You're going to be so negative with yourself sometimes. Life, you're going to look and you complain about everything. It's easy to get negative. It's easy to start to criticize and to complain about things that aren't working out your way. There's only so much that can fit in your mind. Only so much. And whatever goes into your, into your mind, you give power to. You give power to what you focus on. And so it's important to focus on the bright side of things. You can be like this soldier that I met in Fort Sam Houston, Texas, in San Antonio. I'll never forget when I saw him, just looking at him, his story's amazing. He shared with me what happened to him. He said he went down range in, in war where he was about six feet tall, about 200 pounds. He stepped on an explosive device. When he woke up in the hospital, his legs were gone, left arm, left shoulder was gone. And he sat in my room at the time, just under three feet tall and just about 100 pounds. But you couldn't tell by his attitude. The guy had a smile on his face. He was so happy. He was so happy. I was intrigued. And I had to find out what is his key to being positive. I go and I ask him. I said, I said how do you do it? How are you so positive despite, despite what happened to you? He said, sir, every day I leave my house, I say the same thing to myself. So what's that? He says, it could always be worse. I said, you say that to yourself. He goes, sir, at least I'm right-handed. <laughs> I'll never forget that. My young friends, look at the bright side of things. So there you have it, our five principles in our timeout. Five things I want you to remember. Live on purpose with purpose. Got to have the ability to do that. Number two, yeah, I, want you to, I want you to have the ability to be present. Number three, trust the process. It's a long process. Trust it. Trust that the results will come. Number four, got to have the ability to learn from your failures. And number five, look at the bright side. Now, this timeout is almost over. And like any timeout, any field, any court we've ever been on, we're going to break it appropriately. On the count of three, we're going to say something. And we're all going to put our hands up. We're going to break it appropriately. But before that, I want to give you a bonus tip. You're going to go back out there in life. You're going to go back out there in the court, in the field, in the classroom. And you're going to get knocked around. You're going to have your bad days. Principle number six. Always, always carry yourself like a champion. Whoever you are, wherever you're sitting, whether you're in this room or watching from afar, I want you to put your hand in. Put your hand in. We're going to break it. Everyone put their hand in. We're going to let everyone hear us now. We're going to let those opponents hear us. On the count of three, we're going to say, let's go. On the count of three, we say, let's go, and let's let them hear it. One, two, three, let's go. Thank you, guys.